All morning long, we've been talking about the life and the legacy of Apple Chairman Steve Jobs. Yeah, we want to take a closer look now at his impact on American culture and whether Apple can stay can still play a dominant role in the tech world without him. Joining us again is Wilson Tang of CBS tech partner CNET, along with Billboard Magazine editorial director Bill Wordy and Lee Gallagher, an assistant managing editor at Fortune Magazine. Good to have the three of you with us here this morning. Let's talk about that, I guess, right off the bat. Apple, where it now goes without uh, Steve Jobs? I know that he's kind of relinquished control over the last few months. But still, it's a unique mind. Tim Cook now takes over uh, in earnest without Steve Jobs being around anymore. But where, where does the company go? I mean, this is a change that the company has been preparing for for a while. Tim Cook is uh, eats, sleeps, and breathes Apple, uh, knows it inside and out, grew up as the operations guy, the back office guy, obviously now in a much, much bigger role. Um, and not only that, but I mean, Apple has a pipeline that is several years uh, from now where products are going to keep coming out with Steve Jobs' imprint on them. So for the immediate future, I think, you know, things are going to be okay. There was such a connection, though, there. I mean, Steve Jobs was Apple. Apple was Steve Jobs. Despite that, you know, minor break with the company, that's the way it was. There's some talk this morning that even if there's a fair amount of stuff in the pipeline, that in some ways people are concerned this is the end of innovation. Wilson, is that the feeling in the tech community? I mean, that seems like a really... Uh, that's a, sort of a heavy thing no. to put out there. <laughs> <laughs> not, I mean, not at all. Like, uh, uh, one of the best qualities of Steve was that he picked a, an amazing, creative, and uh, innovative team. He realized he didn't know everything. Uh, his biggest asset was, was the taste around the products. Um, and he's already sort of established a strategy um, with his top managers moving forward. And I think that you're going to see the ground pieces for some really innovative products being laid uh, out right now. So in a couple of years, we're going to see some really great things. I have no idea what they are, yeah. but I, I fully anticipate that they're going to still shake up the market. You know, I got to say, though, I mean, there's certain executives, there's certain people in the world that just have kind of a wow factor, right? Apple products were more exciting because Steve Jobs was the guy that was bringing them to the world. So as much as I completely agree, I mean, he, had, he has an incredibly talented team of people, and, and, and this has been known that this was going to, unfortunately, be the day that came. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they how they sort of roll these products out. Also, you know, Apple used music in a really important way to reinvigorate that company. And uh, Apple was caught a little flat-footed by the cloud. You know, you have a situation for the first time. Apple really set the market for digital music downloads. Apple really set the market for, uh, you know, mobile phones and content experience there. But now when you're heading into the cloud space, you've got brands like Spotify, for example, that have really taken a big head start. And Apple will be playing catch up for the first time. Well, just with the presentation the other day with the the new iPhone, it, there was a lot of there was a lot of reaction. A lot of people were a little underwhelmed yeah. with with what they kind of uh, debuted on that I day. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's just because people's expectations are so high. This company is like consistently over the last couple of, of years and even decades has truly innovated and changed the market in dramatic ways. So when Apple doesn't do that, when Apple just releases a good product, yeah. that's a letdown. But, but Steve has done that. He has raised the, the bar so yeah. high. Oh, Can this next group of people maintain those expectations? Because people are expecting so much now. That's a, a great question. Obviously, every single move is going to be hyper-parsed. Everything is going to be under the biggest <laughs> yeah. microscope yeah. now. So, I mean, almost in an unfair way. But, you know, I think that, I mean, Apple has already, what Apple's done is, is sets a, an enormous precedent in business. I mean, it has really just revolutionized six, seven different in, uh, entire industries. So. And, it's, and it's interesting to the point that, that you brought up, Bill, in that, in that for the first time Apple was sort of, you know, caught, oh, you know, we have to catch up to this, to this cloud thing that everybody else has going on. Because in many ways, when Jobs came back and not long after, the tagline for one of their new campaigns was Think Different. He, in many ways, really pushed not only companies within the technology space, but when it came to advertising, when it came to music, pushed them to think differently about the way they do business. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he dragged the music business single-handedly into the digital music age. I mean, people were not able to figure that out. You know, there were uh, digital music stores that were basically owned by the major labels. The, the pricing was wrong. The technology was wrong. And, uh, you know, Apple made it very simple. And that was really one of the things that uh, Steve deserves credit for. But, you know, to that point, it's not that Apple doesn't always need to be first. It was never even first in the music market. Um, it, what it did was it sort of took all this advanced technology. People have been talking about digital music for years before it really took off. And they said, okay, how do I make this simple? How do I make it easy for consumers to access 
Uh, and that's where the beauty of Apple comes from. But it, and, it, and it was first in many things. I mean, this is the, the beauty of Steve Jobs, that he was able to see around cor corners and see what the consumer would want before the consumer even knew. So, hey, we're going to, you know, who would ever think that you would need all of your music in your pocket or that you would buy songs one at a time and just break up the concept of, of the album? I mean, he really kind of did that. And, and he's, he's famous for this. And, and one of the things he said at one point, he said, it's not the consumer's job to know what they want. You know, it's, yeah. and you can look at that as, you know, maybe yeah. a little bit haughty. It's, it's, I, I can tell you what you want, but it is absolutely true. I mean, he sort of took us where we needed to go before we even knew we needed to get there. Is that what everyone else needs to do right now is ask themselves, okay, what would Steve have thought with, with every idea that's basically launched? And how do you stay how do you stay ahead of the curve? Because like you mentioned, he literally brought ideas that we didn't we hadn't even had yet. We didn't know we needed these things he until he actually yeah, presented them to the us. The iPad, he said it's not like I'm filling a void. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just, like, like we're yeah. just bringing it out because we think it's kind of cool. Well, in the technology space, and, and this is something that I think a lot of other technology companies have now learned from, if you look at like a Spotify, for example, Steve, and Steve said this, he said, you know, it's about the consumer. We make products that consumers want. A lot of technology companies were sort of focused on the technology, like this is great technology, mm -hmm. this is cool technology, but it's just about the end user. It's about the music right. fan in the, in the case of music. And that's what changed so much, too, because technology companies seem to be focused for so long on productivity, and it was a, it was a work tool, and he actually made computer Computers and technology yeah. a tool in your consumer life and now those things that we have are uh, right. that, that's a really good point especially with something <laughs> like like the iPad you did not once hear anything about how fast the, uh, the processor was or how much RAM was in it or uh, all these like things that other technology companies market uh, when you go buy a computer from say uh, Dell it's always about how fast it is, how much storage it has, all those other things. And with Apple, it's what can you do with it? Mm -hmm. How can it enhance your life? How can, it, how can you do things that you thought were science fiction a couple of years ago? And that has convinced a lot of people yeah. to spend a lot of money because they're not cheap products <laughs> either. Nope. And they don't ever have sales, really. And it was always so good about the packaging, the presentation and the packaging, which also Beautiful. has Change such design. a plug exactly. and play. All right, Wilson Tang, Bill Wordy, Lee Gallagher, good to have all of you with us Thanks, this guys. morning. Thanks Thank for you. Having me.